Hungarian president Jamal Zeder has passed a new law that nearly doubles how much overtime employees can work. The law boosts the overtime employers can demand from 200 and up to 500 dollars, while payment can be delayed by three years. Mr. Ader said employees must give written consent and would not be penalized for refusing extra hours. It comes after days of protests in Hungary against the so-called slave law, which Hungary's parliament approved on 12 December. I studied the changes to the labor law, and its provisions do not run contrary to the constitution, Mr. Ader said in a statement. He also argued that the terms of the new law were no more strict than labor regulations in other comparable EU countries. Sixteen trade unions are reportedly planning strikes in Hungary as a response to the reforms. Last Sunday, at least 10 000 protesters gathered in the capital, Budapest, during a fifth consecutive day of demonstrations. During protests, two MPs were thrown out of the offices of state broadcaster, Madhvafar trying to broadcast a petition against the measures in a video shot by a local activist. The two MPs were thrown out of the TV station, could be heard shouting, in protest at security guards during the scuffle. Prime Minister Viktor Orban's policies have typically enjoyed widespread support, despite repeated condemnation from other EU nations in elections earlier this year. The Prime Minister's Swedish party won a two-thirds majority in Parliament, making it relatively easy to enact his policies. The government says the laws address a serious labor shortage. The country's unemployment rate at 4.2% in 2017 is one of the lowest in the EU. Hungary's population has been in decline for years, as deaths outpace births. According to the European Statistics Agency, Hungary is also experiencing a brain drain as well-educated people take advantage of free movement within Europe. The problem is serious enough to have prompted a 2015 program to encourage young people to return home, offering housing and employment support. Swedish man George Schopflin previously told the BBC the reforms had been heavily distorted by the opposition. There was no coercion involved in working overtime, and workers would be paid monthly, not in three years, he said. The governing Swedish party has said protests are the work of foreign mercenaries paid by Hungarian-born United States billionaire George Soros. Mr. Soros denies this and says the Hungarian authorities are using him as a scapegoat. A popular tourist attraction has become the latest Chinese company to show solidarity with Hu Ala's chief finance officer, Man Wanzhou, who was arrested in Canada on 1 December. Shannon Mountain Scenic Park in eastern Hainan province said it would make the $9.65 won. Ticket fee for anyone carrying a Huawei phone. Miss Man, who was given bail in Canada, faces extradition to the United States on charges of breaking Iran sanctions. Her case has up tensions with China. Use Huawei phones, shoot grand photos on the mountain. A notice on the Shannon Park's social media account said, We wish friends around the world. Who's part who away success and bliss? The offer would last until 29 December. The South China Morning Post reported that it was met with some criticism among China's social media users who claimed it was discriminatory. Who away phone owners are being offered other enticements to they can get a 20% discount at a border in Beijing. Seen in Beijing. Bring a Huawei phone and get 20% off. Similar to this story we covered yesterday, HTTPS, T, QXL19YPQLPIC, Twitter, Comsocker Love.
End of Twitter post by Atlu Ocean G. At least one firm has threatened to penalize anyone buying Apple products. A few days ago, Manpad Shenzhen, based lead and display manufacturer offered subsidies to any employees buying Huawei phones. It also pledged to fine anyone who bought an Apple iPhone. United States prosecutors, a lead businessman, 46. Used the Huawei subsidiary called Skycom to evade sanctions on year on between 2000 and May on 2014. They also alleged she publicly misrepresented Skycom as being a separate company from Huawei and that she deceived banks about the true relationship between the two companies. Miss Man, who is the daughter of Huawei's founder, has denied any wrongdoing and said she will contest the allegations. Life of Huawei's high-flying errors. The United States has been investigating the Chinese telecoms giant, the world's second largest smartphone maker, since 2016, believing that it used Skycom to bring United States manufacturing equipment and millions of dollars in transactions to Iran in violation of sanctions. Miss Man's detention comes amid an increasingly acrimonious trade dispute between Washington and Beijing. China is angry at her detention, saying she has not violated any laws. Beijing has threatened severe consequences unless Canada releases the executive since her arrest. Two Canadians, a former diplomat, under business mind have been detained in China on suspicion of harming national security. United States President Donald Trump said last week that he might interview in the United States Justice Department's case against this man if it would serve national security interests or help achieve a trade deal with China. If I think it's good for what will be certainly the largest trade deal ever made which is a very important thing, what's good for national security? I would certainly interview if I thought it was necessary, he told Reuters news agency. Canada reacted by urging Mr. Trump not to politicize the situation. Our extradition partners should not seek to politicize the extradition process. Are you set for any other than the pursuit of justice? Foreign Minister Christy of Freeland said, two Scandinavian women tourists have been found dead in Morocco with cards to their necks, the country's interior ministry said. Both bodies were found near the town of Imlao in the High Atlas mountain range, near the foot of North Africa's highest peak, Mount Tepco. The women, from Denmark and Norway respectively, have not yet been named. A police investigation has been launched into their deaths, the interior ministry statement said. The United States military says it has killed 62 fighters from the Islamist group al Shabaq being six air strikes in Somalia. Four air strikes on Saturday killed 32 militants, and a further two on Sunday killed 28, it said in a statement. This were the deadliest air attacks in Somalia since November 2017, when the United States said it had killed 100 militants. Somalia has seen a sharp increase in the number of air strikes and casualties since President Donald Trump took office in the United States in January 2017. A tally by the Bureau of Investigative Journalism reveals that at least 400 people have been killed in air strikes. Since the beginning of 2017, far more than the previous 10 years combined, the latest strikes bring to at least 40 the number carried out in Somalia so far this year, compared with 35 recorded in 2017. The United States has a huge military base in neighboring Djibouti, from where it launches attacks on the militants. Mr. Trump gave the United States military greater authority in March 2017 to attack militants in Somalia. Traditionally, United States presidents 
have been wary of intervening in Somalia, since it is special forces soldiers eyed fighting militias in the capital Mogadishu. In 1993, a battle dramatized in the film Black Hawk Down. No civilians were killed in the latest air strikes, which were carried out in coordination with the Somali government, the United States military said. Alongside our Somali and international partners, we are committed to preventing Al-Shabaab from taking advantage of safe heavens from which they can build capacity and attack the people of Somalia, the United States Africa Command said. Al-Shabaab, which is linked to Al-Qaeda, has not yet commented on the latest strikes. Somalia-based security think tank the Higher Institute said in a report published in November that Al-Shabaab had been forced to change tactics following the upsurge in airstrikes.